the deity kunti called upon first was yama the god of truth and death in the darkness of the forest yama responded to kunti's chant and gave her a son who would be the very embodiment of virtue and patience pandu was beyond himself with happiness he named his first son yudhishthir he who would keep calm even in the heat of battle in the years to come yudhishthir would become the mental rock that his brothers rely upon in times of turmoil kunti then called upon vayudev the wind god his stormy embrace gave kunti a son who would be as strong and as fast as the wind itself when kunti was giving bhim to pandu she dropped him but when pandu saw that the baby's fall had shattered a rock he was pleased with vayu's gift they named their second son bhim bhim would gain fame and be known all over the world as a hero of unmatched strength and courage after this kunti spoke the mantra once more and called upon indra the king of the devas the night spent with indra gave her a son destined to be one of the greatest warriors the world had ever known when pandu beheld his third son he was struck by the child's expression he thought the boy had an archer's eyes and became convinced that the world will come to acknowledge his talent one day pandu and kunti named their third son arjun after arjun's birth kunti made it clear that she would not mother any more sons despite pandu's many pleas she refused to use the mantra again madri however was still without children and kunti agreed to help her become a mother under a night sky full of stars kunti spoke the mantra and summoned the ashwin twins for madri as a result of her time with the celestial brothers madri had two most beautiful sons with his five sons pandu spent a joyful time in the forest yudhishthir arjun and bhim trained with the forest dwellers while nakul and sahadev grew in the care of kunti and madri pandu almost forgot about the misfortune that had visited him recently but the curse was inescapable one day when kunti returned from a journey into the forest she found that pandu was no more in a moment of passion pandu had lost control and forced himself upon madri his death which had been waiting in the shadows all this while finally took him away when pandu was cremated madri chose to enter the flames herself in order to share her husband's fate hastinapur lost yet another son and with him a daughter as well after the death of her husband kunti could not bear the sight of their sylvan home any more it reminded her of all that she had lost here after spending a few more months in the forest she said her goodbyes and left for hastinapur with the five sons of pandu for the pandavas kunti was everything in the world now when word reached hastinapur that in pandu's forest home kunti was pregnant with a child of a dev gandhari grew nervous after all the eldest born child in the family would inherit the throne of hastinapur but gandhari became pregnant with dhritarashtra's child soon enough her pregnancy however was a troubled one she stayed in bed and suffered great pain she had nightmares about creatures from hell the day she gave birth was the saddest day of her life what emerged from her womb was not a child it was a large lump of putrid flesh that had no life in it gandhari who had been blessed by ved vyas and expected to become the mother of 100 sons was devastated in her despair gandhari ordered a dasi to take the lump of flesh and cast it into the forest she did not want to be reminded of her misfortune much less face it this was the moment ved vyas returned to bring his prophecy to life he forbade the dasi from harming what had come out of gandhari he assured the weeping queen that his word will not be in vain she will have 
a hundred sons. In a chamber of the Hastinapur palace, Vyas divided the lump into a hundred pieces. He got the dasi to prepare one hundred and one vats of oil. In every vat, he immersed one piece of the lump. In these vats, the future of the Kuru clan began to take shape. As Gandhari's children came into being inside those vats, ill omens began to be seen around Hastinapur. When the vats broke and Gandhari beheld her eldest born son, Duryodhan, her blindfold prevented her from seeing what was plainly visible to everyone around her. There was something demonic about her 100 sons. They were sons who could only be loved by a blind father and a mother who had forsaken sight. Dhritarashtra and Gandhari were happy parents with dreams that one day Duryodhan would become king. Into their happy world came Kunti with her five sons. The people of Hastinapur welcomed their princes and were happy about the fact that Pandu's sons were alive and well. The coming of the Pandavas was a terrible blow to Duryodhan. While the five sons of Pandu were loved by everyone, Duryodhan found Bhim particularly annoying. It seemed to him he had become Grandfather Bhishma's new favourite. Duryodhan felt left out and his isolation quickly took the form of hatred. In his anger, Duryodhan once made the mistake of challenging Bhim to a wrestling match. Much to his disappointment, he found that he was no match for the Pandav's might. The fight hurt him both inside and out. He was no longer the centre of Hastinapur. In the days that followed, Duryodhan watched in sullen silence as Bhim enjoyed his life in the palace and gathered even more admirers. The hatred in his heart had grown silent, but it had also grown much stronger. It was at this point that Duryodhan's uncle, Queen Gandhari's brother Shakuni, became a mentor to him. He understood the fire that raged in the prince's heart. He told Duryodhan that the Pandavs were pretenders to the throne and they would take Hastinapur from him if he did not destroy them first. Upon Shakuni's advice, Duryodhan organized a lakeside retreat and respectfully invited the Pandavs. His intention was to make the Pandavs lower their guard and unsuspectingly fall into his poisonous trap. The food that Duryodhan served the Pandavs at the retreat was delicious. Bhim in particular ate all he could. What the Pandavs did not know was that Duryodhan had laced the delicacies with sleep-inducing herbs. After having his fill, Bhim decided to take a nap by the lake. He quickly fell into a deep sleep and missed out on the games the other boys were playing near the camp. After sunset, when everyone else had returned to their tents, Duryodhan put the final part of his plan into action. He tied up Bhim's hands and feet before pushing the sleeping Pandav into the lake. The Brahmin who said his name was Drone looked into the well with them. He smiled. Then he fetched a reed of grass and threw it straight down the well like an arrow. Arjun noted that his aim was perfect even without a bow. Arjun was in his balcony when he suddenly heard the painful cries of a Brahmin. When Arjun asked him what the matter was, the Brahmin told him that a group of thieves had broken into his hut in broad daylight and stolen his cows. 